What is up? We are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, Mr. We Are Wrestling himself, the best one, Donnie, here back with a brand new episode of Hot Takes where I give you guys my hot takes on things going on in the professional wrestling world. If you're not, we are Wrestling Maniac yet already and you're not a part of the thousands of subscribers we recommend you to hit that subscribe button now turn on the post notifications videos be coming out of nowhere like an rko and of course you already know the grind is real so in today's episode of hot takes i want to give you guys my hot takes on aew in 2024, especially the IWC, which is known as the wrestling community. And I don't know why I always get sucked into all the toxicity that happens in pro wrestling, maybe because I am a wrestling podcaster, a wrestling reactor, a wrestling content creator, and that's why I probably get sucked into all this stuff, but I have a platform and... Especially when it's hot takes, I don't have a co-host that could talk over me. I get to give you guys my take, and I get to give it to you guys straight to the point. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I am getting sick and tired of the shit AEW is receiving on social media. And all of these WWE marks, these fanboys and fangirls, just, just shitting on AEW. And... I don't know if it's a problem with the promotion itself or if people are just hate Tony Khan because of some of the stuff that has happened throughout the years, which I have covered here on Hot Takes in multiple different episodes. I don't know what it is, but I feel like it's just weird energy. Like, a lot of the times when I'm scrolling through X or Twitter, I see these toxic fans just shitting on AEW every chance they get, whether that's taking a picture of the friggin' hard cam side, where AEW usually doesn't have fans, or during an episode of Collision, they pretty much have, they haven't sold enough tickets, and they just continue the shit on it, and I just don't understand why. Obviously, I think AEW product was a lot better back in the day than it is now. But obviously, I am rooting for professional wrestling as a whole to strive. And it seems like the goal, the agenda on a lot of these trolls is pretty much trying to... They want AEW to go out of business. And that's where I have a problem because a lot of people don't realize that WWE would not be in the position that they're in in 2024 if it wasn't for AEW launching. Because one thing that AEW has done a fantastic job with is their roster. One of the most stacked rosters in all of professional wrestling. And AEW gives these superstars, these pro pro wrestlers, a platform to build their stock. Whether that's staying in AEW and becoming a main event star, building up the confidence, or even getting that confidence enough to go to WWE and become a star. And if you look at the track record of all the former AEW guys that were over in AEW when they first started to going back to WWE, they have been in a better position now than they were during their first stint with the company. And let me give you guys some examples here. We have the WWE Champion, Cody Rhodes. Before AEW, Cody Rhodes was a Intercontinental Champion, a mid-card star at best. Yes, Cody Rhodes did go to the independent circuit. He strived in Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and even Impact Wrestling as well. I will not take that away from him, but his best storytelling was easily in the early days of All Elite Wrestling. The work that Cody got to do with Brody Lee, Maxwell Jacob Freeman... Cody Rhodes has done tremendous storytelling work in AEW, and pretty much he came back to WWE and became a main event player. He's the face of WWE right now, especially the SmackDown brand. 
Another great example I have, Sean Spears. He probably was a little bit more over as Ty Dillinger during his first stint doing the whole 10. But what is a 10 comedy character going to get you at best? Maybe a short run at a mid-card championship. And Ty Dillinger really didn't have a high ceiling in the WWE. So AEW gave him an opportunity as Sean Spears. And believe it or not, he made his debut as the chairman by hitting Cody Rhodes with a steel chair unprotected. And that's where he got the new gimmick, the new character. Which so far at NXT, I feel like it has been a success. Another great example, somebody who wasn't in WWE, Jade Cargill, who right now is one half of the WWE Women Tag Team Champions, with Bianca Belair, who I think is probably the most athletic women's wrestler that they have on their roster right now. My opinion, the best wrestler. But that's a whole discussion for another day. Jade Cargill, she had a tryout with WWE, and she didn't end up going over there. Instead, she decided to go to AEW and build her stock up. And she showed a lot of promise. So WWE, they ended up giving her the bag. And she didn't even have to go to NXT. She went right to the main roster. And started teaming up with Bianca Belair. And I'm pretty sure going into 2025... WrestleMania 41, it will be Bianca versus Jade. They had big plans for Cargill. And AEW gave her the platform to show some of that promise. And even the NXT champion, All Ego Ethan Page. He was another guy that, yes, he, he killed it in the independence. He killed it in Impact Wrestling with Josh Alexander as the North. But he got the opportunity to perform on a bigger stage which was AEW. Yes, he didn't have the best run in the promotion, but he showed enough promise to WWE that he can be a top guy. And literally, in six weeks, he became the NXT champion, and he's the face of the white and gold brand. I can't call it black and gold. But those are some examples, and probably the best example I'm going to save for last, the best in the world, CM Punk. Because a lot of people don't realize is that CM Punk probably would have never came back to professional wrestling if he didn't go to AEW first. Because what happened back in 2014 with WWE, it was a very bad ending to a very toxic relationship. And CM Punk, he needed to go to another promotion to know that it's, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And he ended up coming back home to the WWE, and he's never been happier in his life, which I'm happy for. And I'm not shitting on any of the stars that have left WWE to, or have left AEW to go to WWE. By all means, I want these professional wrestlers to do what's best for them. I want them to be happy at the end of the day because they're putting their bodies on the line for our entertainment. And it just feels like a lot of people just shit on AEW and they feel like if AEW didn't exist, professional wrestling would be a better place. And I feel like that is far from the truth because we need all of these professional wrestling companies to succeed and especially AEW. I understand if you don't like what's happening, you do have the freedom of speech to go out and express how you feel about the product. Hell, I have my own podcast where I will call out the bullshit on WWE, I will call out the bullshit on AEW, but I also will call out the good on both. And it just seems like there's so much tribalism in professional wrestling. Like, there's some AEW fans that need to be held accountable as well that do the same thing. But I feel like the ones that are really just rooting for AEW to rot in hell, I feel like it's just, it's sad. It's pathetic in my opinion because whether it's because Tony Khan has done some stupid things during his run as the CEO and founder of AEW or if it's just the lack of creative and not listening to the fans or it's just completely shitting on the product. And that's where I have a problem because, by all means, if you don't like Tony Khan, you don't like Tony Khan. If you don't like the creative direction that they're going in, you don't like the creative direction that it's going in. 
AEW, they focus more on the stuff going on in the ring. WWE, they focus more on the storytelling. And me personally, I enjoy the storytelling more because I like a good, solid build-up to a fight. And that's something that AEW, they do, but they don't do it as well as WWE. I am not against those fans that are criticizing AEW and they want to see AEW succeed. Because hell, I want to see them succeed as well. But when you're going out and you're posting a freaking picture of freaking empty seats in the AEW arena before the freaking show is on the air when people are literally going to the concession stands and they're going to the bathroom and they're going to the merchandise stand and when they're going arriving in the building... That's where I have a problem. When you have Will Ospreay, which during this episode of Collision didn't have a lot of fans because a lot of people were waiting for AEW All Out. Just showing the freaking empty seats in the crowd in the arena. Like, what is that doing for AEW? Like, that is just what, or actually, that's not even it. What is it doing for pro wrestling? That is not a good look at all for professional wrestling. Yes, AEW needs to get better, but like every week when you're just consistently talking about the ticket sales, when you're consistently showing empty seats, what does that do? And then people want to just always shit on AEW when the ratings come out. Yes, when AEW first started, they were averaging about nine, they were averaging about 800,000 to a million viewers per week. And yes, the ratings have dropped. The ratings have declined. And a lot of that has been since the whole incident that happened to AEW All In 2023 with CM Punk and the Elite. And especially Jack Perry. The ratings have not been the same. The product has not been the same since then. But when you're consistently just shitting on AEW for the ratings, when they're literally still getting more viewers than NXT, who is doing stuff with TNA right now, and people are praising NXT for getting 600,000 when they were freaking averaging about a million viewers during Black and Gold, that is the problem that I have. Like, I understand if you prefer WWE over AEW, but shitting on AEW and praying for its downfall, that is just toxicity, and that is just absolutely pathetic. Because we need all these pro wrestling companies to strive. We almost lost Impact Wrestling at one point. They were so close to going out of business. And luckily, they rebranded themselves as TNA Wrestling, and they have a great working relationship with WWE, and they are striving. And that is what I want in professional wrestling. I want WWE. I want TNA. I want New Japan Pro Wrestling. I want AAA. Hell, I even want the NWA, OVW, NXT, and especially AW to strive. And I can't forget, of course, the independent circuit. Because the independent circuit... Those are the future stars of tomorrow. And a lot of these future stars of tomorrow would have never gotten the opportunity if it wasn't for AEW opening up that door. Because you have to remember, going back into 2018, 2019, WWE was going downhill. If you watch those episodes of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, you would know that... WWE, it was a horrible time to be a fan. But when it's all said and done, AEW kind of pretty much lit a fire under WWE's ass to step it up. And that's the thing. Competition always brings out the best in everybody. And AEW, they were going after a lot of the top independent stars all over the world, especially in the Northeast. How do I know? Because I live in the Northeast. I got to see MJF. I got to see Darby Allen. I got to see a lot of these guys and girls succeed before going to AEW. And around that time, WWE, they were focused on crafting their own superstars. They weren't really going after guys in the independents. They were going after athletes, which they still do to this day, but now under Triple H, they are looking at more independent wrestlers, which is a great thing for the business as a whole. But having another top promotion like AEW 
it's a great way to friggin' establish new stars in the business, and even stars that did everything they could in WWE, Cough Cough, Adam Copeland, and even Christian Cage, like, they're able to go to AEW and have another alternatum. And that is always good for professional wrestling, because even during the Ruthless Aggression era in WWE, and even the PG era, we had TNA Wrestling, which at the time they were averaging about 3 to 4 million viewers a week on Spike. And it was a great time for pro wrestling, because eventually... We got to see AJ Styles, we got to see Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, Eric Young, all of these OG TNA guys get the opportunity to go to WWE and do something. And that, especially being like a TNA um, diehard fan, that was really awesome to see. So as a whole, like having all of these promotions, it makes the business better. And for people to just continue to shit on AEW every chance they get, it's just pathetic, it's just sad. If you don't like AEW, you don't like AEW, move forward. Like, why are you wasting your, why are you wasting negative energy on something that you have no control over? Like, here's the thing, a lot of people think that AEW is going to go out of business. We hear it every year, up oh, 2024, AEW is going to have to file for bankruptcy. And that is far from the truth, because that's the thing, Tony Khan has made, Tony Khan is a billionaire. And Tony Khan has the money to fund All Elite Wrestling. And you can tell by, if you watch any of his interviews, if you watch any of the media scrums, you are at an AEW show and you cut, you watch Tony Khan come out and cut his little promo 90 seconds before the show goes live on TBS or TNT. You can tell he is a fan just like us when it comes to pro wrestling. And I understand he's done some really stupid shit. I've covered it multiple times, multiple episodes of Hot Takes. But at the end of the day, like we got to think about the wrestlers. Because at the end of the day... This is get AEW is giving more talented men and women opportunities. They're giving them jobs because there's only so much time WWE has on television. WWE can't have everybody. You have three hours of Monday Night Raw. You have two hours of NXT. Hell, you even have like three minute speed matches on X or Twitter. And you even have SmackDown, which is two hours. And remind you, the PLEs, they are dropping with lesser matches for WWE. With only five or six matches on a card. And there's only so many spots. So to have AEW, another alternatum out there, it's just giving more guys and girls who are very talented job opportunities to entertain. And that's the thing. There's a difference between sports entertainment and professional wrestling. And obviously, most of us, we enjoy the sports entertainment because we get glued to these larger-than-life characters. We get glued to... We get glued to the storylines that build up these matches that we look forward to. While AEW, the, the stars are out there, they're great, talented, professional wrestlers, and they're focused on getting five-star matches and just putting on great matches in the ring. And there are some fans out there that appreciate that. I appreciate it, even though I do prefer the sports entertainment route, and I prefer what WWE does more than AEW, I still am a fan of the sport in the ring. And I feel like when the IWC just continues to shit on AEW, it's like you're shitting on other people enjoying something. And what is fun about that? To me, that's just bullying. That's fucked up. That is just wrong. And at the end of the day, like, I think right now wrestling is striving. Like, what a time to be a pro wrestling fan. Like, why is there so much negativity in the IWC? Like, earlier today, guys, I was on X, and I'm recording this on a Friday, by the way. This is coming out on um, Sunday after the All Out Watch along, which if you're a part of that, thank you in advance. <laughs> so this one tweet really stood out to me and gave me a reason to make this episode of Hot Takes. And this account is, her name is Andy Annie, and she posted this, and I quote, 
I just got called a fake wrestling fan because I don't listen to wrestling podcasts. I hate the term fake fan. If someone watches the product, they're a fan. Just because they don't live, sleep, eat, and breathe, it doesn't make them any less of a fan. And that, to me, is just very accurate. Like, why are we shitting on people, especially casuals, who are enjoying the product? Just because they are not obsessed with it, like us, we are wrestling maniacs, doesn't make them any less than us. Because at the end of the day, if we want wrestling to really boom like it did in the Attitude Era, like it did in the early 90s with these larger-than-life characters, we need casuals. Because, let me tell you, back in the day, friggin' 5 to 6 million viewers a week, those, a lot of them were casuals that were there. At the end of the day, like, yes, we need diehard pro wrestling fans because we keep this thing going, but the casuals, it's always good to bring in new people into the thing we love. So shitting on somebody, calling them a fake fan, how is that good for the business? Oh, I hate the IWC so much. So I told her, anybody that watches something, they, anybody, or here's what I said to her, and I quote, Anybody that watches something they like is a fan. If anything, we need more fans like you because the IWC is so toxic and sometimes it's really not fun being a fan when you read the rumors, the spoilers, AEW versus WWE tribalism. And this is coming from somebody who does a wrestling podcast. And it's just to me like... The IWC, like, I feel like social media has really just brought out the worst in so many people, and that can be said, like, anything outside of professional wrestling. Politics is very toxic, basketball, football, all sports, everything is just so toxic, but man, like, we need to do better. The IWC, we need to do better, because... Right now, in 2024, we're in a boom period right now. What a time to be a pro wrestling fan. And it's great to have all of these options out there. So we shouldn't be shitting on people who enjoy AEW. If you're one of the thousand that are in an arena that you could fill up to 10,000, just let them enjoy themselves. Let them have a good time. There's no reason you should be shitting on them. There is one more thing I do want to add before we close off this episode of Hot Takes. I'm not telling you you don't have the right to have an opinion. You're allowed to like whatever you like. You're allowed to dislike whatever you dislike. And that's the thing. Like, with AEW, it isn't the same. I prefer AEW back in 2021 a whole lot more than AEW in 2024. Yes, I still enjoy AEW as a company, but yes, there is things I don't like about it. No promotion is perfect out there. And yes, even WWE, they are not they are far from perfect. And the reason why people don't talk about a lot of the cons with WWE is because everybody's negative energy is all towards AEW. But we're all allowed to have an opinion. We're all allowed to like whatever we like. We're all allowed to dislike whatever we dislike. But what I want you to do if you hate AEW, you absolutely despise it, you want them to go out of business, you want Tony Khan to rot in hell, I want you to tell me five good things about AEW. And that is the argument I always have with the WWE marks. And that's the problem with this entire world, especially the IWC, is that we're so close-minded. And I feel like in order to learn, in order to strive, in order to grow, you need to be able to learn and adapt, and you need to be open-minded. And that's the thing. A lot of the times, these trolls and these fake accounts with no profile pictures, they can't tell you those five good things because at the end of the day, their intentions are they want AEW to go out of business, and they will do everything in their power to just absolutely hate hate it and just, just continue to breathe 
negative toxicity that we don't need in the IWC. And at the end of the day, that's pretty much how I feel about the IWC. Like, I understand, like, you're not going to be a fan of everything. Like, we would be boring-ass people if we all liked the same thing, if we all were wearing the same thing. We were all doing the same thing. This would be a boring world we live in. But why do we have to be negative? Why do we have to be toxic? There's so much bullshit that we deal with in this world, and it just baffles me friggin' how toxic friggin' pro wrestling fans are. But that is it for my rant on this week's episode of Hot Takes. It's been, I can't believe, four months since I last did an episode here. And that, I promise you, will not happen again. We are not going on a hiatus because I miss doing this shit. So let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on the IWC. Your thoughts on some of the stuff I said. Is there things that I'm missing here? Because when it comes to hot takes, I don't like to read a script. I just like to just shoot the shit, repeat myself, and just talk. Yap, yap, yap. So let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on all of this. If you enjoyed this and you guys want more episodes of Hot Takes, make sure to smash that like button now. If you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already, subscribe, turn on the post notifications, check out the newest episode of the We Are Wrestling podcast. New episodes are coming out every Friday. And if you are a part of the AW All Out watch along that already happened by the time this is out, thank you. I do appreciate you guys coming into the live chat, hanging out with me, watching some good old wrestling. Links down in the description below. You can go follow me over on my social medias and my toy channel at Best One Donnie. All the links down below. And of course, to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide, we are taking over. Peace. <laughs>